Next into the den is Jason Gledhill from Hampshire. So I've been in the leisure industry since I was 20, uh, and in 2015 I started my own company. I've enjoyed it, and it's building up something for myself and my family. I think they're going to be uh, proud. Sorry. Jason can be forgiven for feeling a little emotional, especially given what lies ahead. I'm excited to go into the den and nervous at the same time. Getting more and more nervous as, as we get closer. Hello Dragons, my name is Jason Gledhill and I'm owner, founder and director of Redcott Leisure Limited. I'm looking for a £100,000 investment for 10% of my company. Redcott Leisure manufactures and retails micro campers, micro camper conversions and awnings and accessories for micro campers. This is our very own layout and it's in the sleeping setup as mo at the moment. So what is a micro camper? It's a van derived car such as a Citroen Berlingo or a Peugeot Partner and our conversions retain the five travelling seats so it can be used every day as your everyday vehicle or as a camper van or day van. My plan is to open more branches across the UK and then eventually open more in Europe. Um, thank you for your time, if you'd like to come and have a look at the micro camper please do, if you have any questions please let me know. Micro campers, as well as micro camper conversion kits and accessories, are the offering from Jason Gledhill. I want to see Peter in that micro camper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go for it, Peter. Party for one. <laughs> Jason is seeking £100,000 in return for a 10% share in his business. I just want to see if it's long enough. Can we shut the boot on him? Bye, Mr Jones. Night. See you in the morning. Night. Legroom doesn't appear to be an issue, even for the den's tallest dragon. <laughs> but now Peter Jones wants to size up Jason's business. So, Jason, um, I have to say it was very comfortable. So, what vehicles does this fit? Any uh, van drive cars, so um, anything that's based on a van. So they all have sliding doors on them and they all have good head height, but you can park it anywhere. You can park it in a multi-storey car park. And how many have you sold so far? What, the vehicles or the... Or uh, the... What the or two... The conversions. So what's the difference? So, for instance, this vehicle, you can buy the complete vehicle as it is with a new MOT and it's 11, uh, 10995 uh, and it's all done. £11,000? Yeah. That's mad. Good man, bad man. Really good man. Especially when, you know, a motorhome of the same age as this will probably cost you 35,000. So, how much does it cost to this package now? A full conversion, which includes electricity, fridge, uh, blackout blinds, cooker, and a kettle, is 2,000 for, for the majority of vehicles. You charge 2,000 to do all of that? Yeah. When someone buys a conversion, they order it online and they can either have it sent directly to them or they can go to one of our branches and we'll install it for them. OK. And what's been the turnover the last 12 months? 858,000. Gross margin? Gross margin, uh, 374. And the net margin, uh, 224. Well, you've done really well. Thank you. Comparative affordability plus healthy profits equals praise from Peter Jones. She's better known for crafting than camping, so will Sarah Davies be sold on Jason's plans to open up the great outdoors? I absolutely love this sort of stuff. <laughs> My dad built me a camper van last summer. I mean, we just, the kids love it. Yeah. We absolutely love it. And obviously you've massively benefited from the huge buzz in this market since lockdown. Yeah. But, but the great thing is, I don't think that shows any sign of slowing down. Normally, you need a lot of money to buy a motorhome. Mm -hmm. And this opens the door to people 
uh, to get a motorhome, you know, for, for relatively cheap money, and it's their everyday car, so it's just one vehicle that's doing a bit of everything. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So you want to scale up, and what's the plan for spend with the 100 grand? A couple of things. We've done very little advertising, and also um, purchasing more expensive vehicles uh, and increasing the stock level we have. What is your stock holding at the moment? Pro probably about 350,000. And cash in the bank? 75. So you don't really need the 100 grand from us? No, I, I've done all this on my own. I've not had a mentor. Uh, and that's, that's what, what I need, I think, to take it to the next level. One man band, Jason, feels a dragon's backing could make his business really sing. But a marketing minded Deborah Meaden has a pressing question. Jason, what's the brand? Uh, Redcott Leisure. Y yeah. <laughs> I was wondering the same you know, thing. You know what I'm going to say next? Yeah. That's the name of your company? Yeah. What's your brand? Um... Good question, isn't it? It is a good question, yes. Because I can see, you know, this is the type of community that, that will be wandering over and saying, cool, that's cool. Yeah. Where did you get that from? But they're not going to say, I need to get a red car limited. Red Cot Leisure. Are you really wedded to that brand? No. <laughs> the only thing I know about marketing is you want something that is not, uh, sort of a, a more unique word so it's easier yeah. to, you know, there's no point. You in need it, it does what it says on the tin type name. Yeah. What about camp car? <laughs> <laughs> I know why you're in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got a lot more competition when you do that. So obviously we... I think he was joking. There is no way in this world anybody is ever going to name that cat car. No. <laughs> Stephen Bartlett's camp car seems to have stalled on the starting grid. Yet, given his lack of a clear brand identity, is Peter Jones still prepared to greenlight Jason's onward journey? What a great business you've created in a very short space of time. Um, and what I believe this business is, is that I think you are a micro camper van dealer. Right. As opposed to looking at this as in a, a camper box. Yeah. And creating a brand like Camper Box and selling that to multiple dealerships all over the world. It's a bit like Ikea in a box for camper van people. That, for me, would have been actually more interesting as a business. But what you've done is you've created a great business for yourself, but you are ultimately a camper van dealer. I don't want to be involved in a one-man dealership selling camper van as a, as a complete solution. Mm. I don't think that will give you the future success that an investor would look for. And for that reason, I'm sorry, but I'm out. The trade in second-hand vehicles has failed to get Peter Jones's motor running. Will Deborah Meaden be any more prepared to do deals involving wheels? First of all, congratulations. Thank you. You've come up with a great idea and you've done it. You're making money, you're making good money. It's the car bit that worries me. Because at the moment, half of your business is in the vehicles. Yeah. You know, and, and I, that's not a business I particularly want to get into. No. So I'm having a bit of an internal battle, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, oh. Oh, do you know, something I've learnt in life. If I can't go, yes, I shouldn't do it. I don't think I'm going to do it. But if you've learnt anything today, get yourself a brand. Um, I'm really sorry, I won't be investing. I'm out. You have a great business. However, when I make investments in the den, it's not just because it's a great business. It's because, like, I have a passion for the problem. Tuka doesn't get out of bed for 1%. I don't get out of bed if I'm not passionate about it. And in this case... I have it's... both, by the way. Sorry? I have to be passionate. OK, I thought it was just 1%. Um, I live by passion. That's fascinating. Um, 
So in this case, although I think you're great, I'm personally not passionate enough about this business and this industry to be the right investor for you. So for that reason, I'm out. Right, Jason, I was going to sit here and try and play it really cool. Um, and I kind of, because I just feel fit to burst with excitement, honestly, because I love the business. I love the industry and I think you're absolutely brilliant. And as excited as I am about this business, I can tell you who's going to be even more excited. My dad is going to have kittens when I tell him about this. He'll think this is wonderful. And my dad is the one that I learned a lot of my business skills from. So what I'd like to propose is that I would offer you all of the money, 100,000, in return for 15% of the business. And that's because I plan to make the investment for my 10%. And then I plan to involve my dad in the business as well and give him 5% of the business. And he will be the hands-on mentor with you every day of the week if you need him. And I will take responsibility for helping you put a marketing strategy together and also in scaling the business. Because I think we'll get the marketing right, it's going to scale a lot faster than what you're thinking. Thank you. An offer for Jason from fellow fresh air fiend, Sarah Davies who, in a highly unusual move, has thrown her dad into the bargain. Tuka Suleiman has been keeping mum, but it appears he's ready to show his hand. Jason, I've heard a lot, and yeah. in my view, you've done a great job at this stage, but I can, I can see this really taken to another level. I'm involved in a property project, which does a very sort of modular system but very upmarket, and one could pick up a lot of ideas in what they've done in very small spaces. Yeah. Little, little, just little things, you think, oh, I didn't think of that. I love all of this stuff, manufacturing, design, product. So, um, I'm gonna make you an offer. I'll offer you all of the money, but I'll, I also want 15% of the business. Is, is there any way we can get nearer to the, the 10%? So I think that's a fair valuation. So from my end, Jason, the idea was I was I would put the, the 100,000 in for 10%, and then I was going to give my dad the 5% to come on board as like a, a support mentoring. Yeah. What I would be prepared to do would be to drop my stake to 5%, which would make your overall 10% if you return my money in 18 months. And I would match that. <laughs> of course you would. You made a decision? I have, yeah. I'd like to accept the offer, Sarah, thank you. Excellent, can't Whoa. wait to work together, Jason. This is possibly the most excited I've been doing an investment while I've sat in this chair. Excellent, I'm glad to hear about that, thank you. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, well, thank you. Be in touch. Well done, Sarah. Jason has done it. He leaves the den with £100,000 and the backing of a dragon whose enthusiasm for his business appears to know no bounds. I was having that one. I didn't care what any of you said, I would have fought you tooth and nail. Sarah had more passion. Not only have I got a, a dragon, I've also got a dragon's dad, which is it's amazing.